Hello and welcome to the eighth video in this beginner series programming a tile puzzle game on the iPad using Cocos 2D and iOS. Before we start anything in this video, go to the resources please and change the name of the board-hd.png to board-ipadhd.png. Right, in this video we're going to implement or start implementing what we looked at in the, less, uh, the last video which was the layout of the tiles on the screen. And we'll be drawing the tiles on a different layer to the background layer. We'll be drawing them on the what's going to be called gameplay layer. So right click on Tile Tutorial folder, select New File, a Cocos CC 2D template with a CC node class. Make sure it's of type a subclass of CC layer, and I'm going to call it Game Play Layer and create. And this will add in it's exactly the same as the background layer, our gameplay layer. Go into background layer and copy the the init function here and paste it into gameplay layer inside the implementation and end. And now before we do anything with the layer itself, let's add this layer to our game scene. So let's import gameplay layer dot h and down here let's quickly add or create sorry uh, an object with gameplay layer and gameplay layer node to initialize it and then let's add it in the same way that we did with the background layer as a child of this scene and we'll add it at the z index of one so that anything that's drawn on it is drawn over our background layer Good, so that's a layer added and already added and initialized in our scene. Now going back to the layer itself, let's have a quick think again, or look just as a reminder at this board situation here. We're going to be displaying the tiles on a grid. And we've got some constants here. We're positioning all the tiles, reference their, off, their um, anchor point will be the bottom left at 0, 0 of each tile. So we're, and we're going to reference them relative always to the bottom left corner of the board when we're positioning them. And that's always the bottom left corner at 160x and 32y. So there's a couple of constants. The width of the tiles is 130 is constant. The gap is 6 and the border is 15. These are also constants. So the first thing I want to do at the top of the gameplay layered implementation file, the .m file, is define five constants to reflect this. And I've prepared them already and I'll paste them in here just to speed the video up a little bit. So we've got our board corner X, board corner Y, tile border, tile gap and tile width. Now if we go back to how the tiles are going to be laid out, I'm going to be using a columns and rows reference for each of the tile to be able to work out at which coordinate the tile needs to be placed or moved to when it's swiped and then a move is made such as here. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have, as I said in the last video, a couple of C syntax arrays, simply like this. One which will have the column number, so this would be column 0, this would here would be column 2, the last column, column 4. And with rows, row 0, row 2, row 4 in this way. And the two arrays, as I said in syntax, are going to look like that. And I'm going to declare those now and quickly copy those and paste them into the code here at the top just underneath the definitions I'm missing a comma there so that's our rows and color arrays which are constant won't change in the program will be used as a reference for the tiles later on our last thing we need now if I just go back into Inkscape is we need a way of being able to ask for the X and Y coordinate when we want to place a tile at a given row and a given column and the way we'll do that, I already explained in the last video, you can basically say, if we imagine we're going for the X coordinate, a given tile is at position 160, which is the start of the board, plus the border, which is 15, and then plus the width of the tile plus the gap, multiplied by the column number. So if it's the first tile, it'll be, as you can see here, multiplied by zero, the tile width plus the gap, which will mean we'll be at position 160 plus 15. If it's in column 1, it'll be 160 plus 15, taking us to here, plus the tile width, plus tile 6, and plus gap 6, sorry, and so on. So this little formula here 
could be made saying a tile is at in terms of the x coordinate the board corner x plus the border thickness plus the tile width plus the tile back gap multiplied by the column number and in the y direction you'd say the board corner y plus the border plus the tile width plus the tile gap multiplied by the row number simple as that and what I want to do is inside the implementation of gameplay layer here is add a couple of functions that return integers of the position then of the tile so I'm simply going to, because I've prepared them already, paste them in here and then quickly talk through them because it's quicker than watching me type it all out. You can quite easily pause the video. So we've simply got here to get x from a tile column and we return then, like I said, the x, the board corner x plus the border, the tile width plus the tile gap multiplied by the column and exactly the same is done for the row it's here multiplied by the row. So that should be really straightforward to understand. So that's it for this video. In the next video we'll go into the initialization function and start initializing the tiles on the board. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.